rental houses and the owners of the property have no idea what is going on behind closed doors. You rented it out to this person, what was this yeah. person like? He seemed genuine enough. I mean, for the first couple of months, he was just paying us some money up front and he owned two businesses. Uh, he seemed okay. I mean, he was yeah. a nice enough guy to talk to and he was a really nice guy, he was tidy. Within weeks of Phil renting out the property, his neighbours started to notice suspicious behaviour. Do you guys remember when there was like a cannabis farm here? Yeah, I can remember the cannabis farm, yeah. What do you remember seeing? Just remember seeing a jungle come up the front door. A jungle? That's all it was, just plant after plant after plant. There was hundreds of them. Yeah. Never seen nothing like it in my life before. Did you have like no idea? I had an inkling. I said, like I said, it's a bit dodgy, all the flipping windows and all that. Yeah. Because it's like one guy coming in back and forth, then all of a sudden, then flipping out. Mm. When the police come reading through there, it was just... There was no one in there, but it was just actually shocking to see what they were bringing out. Yeah. They were just wishing that I could grab some of them. I'm joking. <laughs> it was no joke, however, when Phil realised his insurance policy didn't cover him for the criminal damage caused by the factory. It's cost him hundreds to restore. This whole part, you know, all the interior doors were off. Uh, they're all nailed to the banister here, with all um, polythene then stapled to the roof and all down to one side. I think it was about 350 to 400 plants in here. It looked like Sherwood Forest, the bedrooms. I was expecting Robin Hood to pop up with his merry men in there, and bow and arrows, because that's what it looked like to me. <laughs> to make matters worse, Phil's tenants have been dangerously bypassing the meter and stealing massive amounts of electricity to power the setup. When the electrician came here um, for the electrics, he said to us another couple of days, he said that we would have caught fire anyway. How much do you think they actually stole? Well, I know. <laughs> we had a bill for £8,310. Wow. Um, in around about 12 weeks. So, I mean, that's so much power they estimated that they were taken. It was when Phil confronted his tenant that he really got a sense of the scale of the business. When he finally admitted to me that he did have cannabis grown in the house, um, he basically said to me, uh, he would give me 50, well, he pulled an amount of money out of his pocket and he said there was £15,000 there. Wow, um, cash, just in cash. out of his pocket. Yeah, and um, he, wanted it, he wanted to give me that just to leave him in the house for two weeks because that was when the crop will be ready and he reckoned it was 350000 to half a million there wow. in money. So, yeah, yeah. But I just basically told him to stuff his money and I walked away from him. I got as far as the car. And he offered me hundred thousand pounds. A hundred thousand pounds. If I Phil. if I um, left him there um, for another three months. And then you said. And I said no. I, I, what? I don't want. I don't want any money. I, I could do it. Eh? Yeah. Maybe wrong. But I mean, who couldn't? I could do it like a hundred grand. Yeah, it's like that. If I'd thought about it quick enough, I could have sold him the house for hundred thousand. <laughs> Just sang with him. <laughs> I mean, people have told me I'm stupid not to take the money, but. Yeah. <laughs> But like I said, I, 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 I don't, I'm not into drugs. I mean, never have been. Yeah. I've seen what they've done to a few of my friends. Um, and I, de I, you know, I don't want it on the streets, especially around this area, you know what I mean? It's bad enough now. Yeah. I mean, never mind another half a million pounds worth of cannabis on the streets. I respect Phil for refusing the cash and taking a stand against the criminals who invaded his house. It's good to touch the green, green grass oh. I've decided it's time I checked out a raid for myself so I can experience firsthand how police are tackling the criminals who've moved into the cannabis grow market. Before we set out, the team planned their raid using some surprisingly familiar tools. Do you know what? From this, this quality of picture, if someone was growing cannabis in this house, we'd be able to tell. From the shot? From the picture. Really? Yeah. yeah. You'd see condensation on the windows. Right. And mould usually grow on the windows, but that looks quite mouldy on that one. <laughs> so, all very innocent applications, but they're very useful to us. You know? <laughs> the thing is, whenever you get to someone's front door, you never know what's going to be on the other side. Yeah. More often than not, it's straightforward, but sometimes, you know, people aren't happy to see the police. And it's, um, so you just don't know what's going to happen. Condensation on the inside of the windows, that's what people say to After a couple of knocks, there's no reply, so the order for the door to be smashed is given. However, it seems the person inside takes longer to answer than the police are used to. 
That's a copy of the search warrant. Well, you've got a basement of it. Cannabis plants have been found inside. And while the suspect is being questioned, I'm giving the all clear to investigate the crime scene myself. John, what's going on in here? There are some plants in here, not very many. Um, you try not to touch electric, so sometimes they can be a little bit iffy. Someone's got caused an awful lot of trouble for what is not very many plants. Well, obviously, we'll check the rest of the house, but I mean, to me, that. That suggests that that's just for itself. That's certainly not a right. any kind of commercial scale or for, for a supply or anything like that. But. I found six of these little pots upstairs. This one's marked Flow Go. And uh, they each contain um, what, what look like cannabis seeds. It looks like he's a bit of a cannabis connoisseur. Yeah. He, he likes to try different species. I found some more of these around the house, but they weren't such as gold, blue cheese on them. It's just different types of okay. cannabis. Where are we at now? He's just going to be arrested by Sam for production um, and it transpires as the police were only here a few weeks ago and they found exactly the same. How many plants would he have had to have had down there for it to...? That's a, a problem we come across a lot because no one will make a specific decision as to what number of plants constitutes something other than growing it for yourself or what number of plants will constitute being concerned in the supply. So. Mm. Um, it's not a screen tone, is it? Mum. Yeah. <laughs> Shall I tell her? <laughs> no, um, maybe not. Yeah. Those growing cannabis for personal use will often get a fine or community service. Commercial growers risk going to jail for up to 14 years. From this raid, it's clear there are still old school stoners out there who love to grow a few plants for a hobby. But whether you're growing for yourself or you're growing to supply in the eyes of the law, it's illegal. If you got the money, I think it would be fun here. Uh -oh. take Recently, I've seen loads of high street shops that seem to be associated with the cannabis industry. I want to find out how they can be legal when smoking and growing cannabis isn't. I head down to Brighton to a shop called Skunk Works, run by some of the lads we met in the coffee shop in Amsterdam. So me playing devil's advocate here in the background, Title of the name of the shop, Skunk Works. Yeah. Explain yourself. S stick it on any computer, man, and it comes up as a small group of people working as a business, basically. Yeah, it's a business term. All right, so Frank, say that I walk in off the street, I come up to you behind the counter and ask for a bit of skunk. I'd probably do one or two things. I'd either just point because it's so pathetic, I can't even waste a breath <laughs> on telling you that it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> or, or I'd rise to it probably and say, yeah, mate, oh, and when I've seen them rise up, I'd just say, get out. <laughs> everyone knows yeah. it's illegal. This shop is known as a head shop, specialising in smoking accessories. But I'd never realised just how versatile the products on sale could be. First up, the cookery range. If you want to look down here, um, all these products are related to the kitchen. This particular one here is a herb grinder, yeah? Yep. Put your herbs that you're going to cook with. Yeah, bit of box OQ, yeah, maybe. whatever. Yeah. Grind it up, it's ready to go. Right. Yeah. There's uh, multiple use for them. Uh, that's been one example. All the scales. You can use them for multiple reasons. Uh, jewelry being one of the most popular ones just recently, with gold and stuff. This is the leaf in which a lot of people trust, okay? And it is just a leaf. Um, we in no way promote the use of any of these leaf-like products. That's a five-pack of lowrider. Yep. They may not sell cannabis here, but they do sell seeds, from which you can grow plants. Not that these seeds will be used for that purpose, of course. So we can see, like, the word souvenir right, yep. on a couple of the packages. What does that actually mean? What, what is a souvenir? You know, a key ring. You know, it can mean anything. It can mean, yeah. Take your home, sit on your mantelpiece. pace. Yeah. You can you know, sit and look at it. You can do present. whatever you want with it. It's a present, mate. Bought you some seats. Thank you, mate. Souvenir. I'll put that on my mantelpiece. There you go. It's legal to sell them. So yeah, you sell them. it's a bottom line. Yeah, that is as simple as it gets. They're legal. We sell them. We give you no information on them. Just tell you the price. Yeah. Take it on because Skunk Works sell cannabis seeds, they're not allowed to sell growing equipment as that could be seen as encouraging people to cultivate cannabis. The lads have a separate shop in another town that sells everything you need. 
if you did want to take up growing indoor plants as a hobby. So Scott, if I was going to set up a home grow kind of project at home, what would I do? Um, well, if you went for say it's all like this, I suppose this system is like an auto watering one, so it saves you some time and effort. You set your pump up on a timer, basically it will drip feed each of the four pots when you want it to sort of thing. 400 watt light would be sort of adequate enough for that. Then you have your ventilation system, all you're extracting that is just warm air, no yeah. smell at all. Okay, and what would you call this type of setup, like from, um, from the bottom up? Just, yeah, <laughs> it's just a metre squared tent setup, I suppose, man. Yeah, it's grow big tomatoes with it. <laughs> Did he say tomatoes? The truth is, the equipment sold here is standard kit in your average cannabis factory, although it can be used to cultivate any indoor plant. What do you think about people that get your expert advice and will probably be using it to grow cannabis? We're a business. If you want to come and buy and put, you know, pots and, and systems off us, NFT, trays, whatever you want to buy, I'll sell it to you. You just, you know, if you start telling me it's a to, for the cultivation of cannabis, I can't say it to you. I mean, look, there's nothing here that's actually specifically designed no. to grow cannabis with no, anyway. No, no, definitely not. It, it's only a few months, uh, well, weeks back that we had peppers in that. And yeah, it pepper, goes crazy. Like, we, we, had, we had peppers in the wind of, on the aeroponics, and it went, the, the amount you got off it was unbelievable. And yeah, we've had all sorts of stuff olives. Um, like plenty of tomatoes. tomatoes yeah. Yeah, it it is, might not look it, like it your is. average garden, as I suppose, yeah, but it is quite. It is. That is very interesting. Yeah, it's just good fun, you know. Like um, anyone can do it. Your favorite I'm not sure about the lads' enthusiasm for growing fruit and veg, but I am starting to see there's a massive grey area in the laws around cannabis cultivation. It's perfectly legal to buy and sell everything that's needed to grow cannabis. Yet the moment I put a seed in a plant pot, I'm breaking the law. Back in London, I'm off to meet a man called Phil Walsh, who's planted many cannabis seeds in his time and has the criminal record to prove it. Hi, thank you. Come in. Oh, this is the uh, garden area, which is where I used to grow where the plants have been uh, seized from various occasions in my life. This one's normally for the sweet peppers and chilies, but this is the one that I'd normally have grown in previously. Phil started growing when he was 17 and doesn't see it as a crime. In fact, he reckons it's the only way to guarantee he's smoking good quality gear. So Phil, why did you decide to grow your own cannabis plants initially? Initially, it was to avoid uh, dealing with criminals and contaminants. It means that I don't have to buy it off of kids on bicycles, because that's the state of the situation in half the estates of Britain at the moment. You've got 10 and 11 year old children running around selling cannabis laced with cut, uh, ground glass, for instance. Mm. So then you started growing your own uh, for personal use? Yeah. And then how did that kind of develop? I just realised that there was a there was a viable market in the seed production side of things. And my interest just got greater, really. Soon, Phil wasn't just growing a few plants to smoke. He'd started crossbreeding plants to create seeds for his own cannabis strains. He says his experiments led him to have 300 plants. I can tell that you're a purist. Yeah. Um, but how did you go about convincing the judge that you had 300 plants just for your personal use. Well, That's a lot of plants. Like, yeah, there are a lot of plants, but you've got to realise that you've got plants this big yeah. when they come in. Yeah. And I might have had maybe 30 plants full size. He realised that what was going on, the way the things were marked up, that I was doing something other than drug production. Right. Now, this is my private seed collection. There are a lot of things. Yeah, different. yeah. Phil has hundreds of ungerminated seeds in his collection. He spent years trying to perfect his own varieties. Um, these are my own brand of seeds. Um, obviously, I can't do this anymore. Uh, so if you one. was to get caught cultivating one of those? Or Again, of those. I'd almost certainly go to prison this time. Could be for up to 14 years. Um, <laughs> it seems a bit strong for growing a flower, especially one that can't kill you. <laughs> Phil does believe cannabis is getting more dangerous though and he thinks the problem lies with the contaminants organised criminals are adding to it to mimic the look of THC crystals 
the ingredient in cannabis that gets you high. These are proper THC crystals.